The US spot ETS faced the third day in a row of outflows. $145 million worth of Bitcoin was drained from the spot ETFs. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. In today's video, of course, talking about the news, I have some big news out there because of the spot ETS and how that will influence the charts. And about those charts, we're going to take a look at five amazing Bitcoin charts and show you exactly where Bitcoin is and where we will go in the short and in the long term, guys. Also answering the question of one of the followers, of course, also ending the video again with the inspirational quote a video packed with cool information so make sure you start with giving it a thumbs up now and yes of course watch the full video and also thanks for subscribing and sharing it already with all your friends and family let's jump into that news first the big news for today is that the u.s spot ETFs are having outflows already now for three days Monday, already $145 million worth of Bitcoin flowed out. The leader in outflows at the moment is Fidelity with $90 billion worth of outflows. The Bitwise fund, BitB, was the only one with inflows and it was only 3 million US dollar. So yes, a lot of people that invested into these Bitcoin spot ETFs are selling already at the moment. There is a lot of outflows. What does it mean for the bigger picture in spot ETFs? Are we running negative already or are we still positive? Of course, we are still positive. I think the accumulative net flow was around 15 billion US dollar and the total amount of assets under management is like 58 billion US dollar. So it's all good. But there are outflows and it is creating selling pressure to the full market because when they start to sell, other people start to sell and you get the snowball effect of people selling. And you know what happens then? Smart people, the smart money, my money, your money, because you're watching these videos, you are buying these dips. I just added to my Bitcoin long-term portfolio again and I also opened this long. It's a medium risk long with a high leverage because the stop loss is of course above my liquidation level. But just I want to play a little bit with this market. So I opened the long, you can see the long over here. I think I opened around 65,460-ish. Yes, I'm going to go for 66, 67K again. I believe that the bounce is now uh, going to start uh, V-shape from the bottom again back maybe to the 67K levels where there will be another resistance but that's a nice trade for some profits for today again to go for dinner while I'm watching the European football championships guys so my opinion nothing is wrong with the spot ETS it's just another dip just like we see dips all over the market a lot of people didn't expect dips in this uh, Bitcoin spot ETF market but now we know yes the Bitcoin spot ETFs are also being sold so there's also dips in that market so yes the market is still about demand and supply and will stay about demand and supply for the whole period of Bitcoin's existence it's always about demand and supply and at the moment the demand for spot ETFs is not as big as there was at the beginning but like I've been saying in the last couple of videos you give it a couple of months give it this summer break enjoy that summer break and we will see this massive bull market again where you will become euphoric and we'll all be there to tell you hey don't be too euphoric because the bull market top will be in 2025. The first chart for today, guys, is this uh, four hour chart, like always, the four hour chart. Um, I opened a long this morning. Why? Because I think it's a medium risk long. We are in this area over here of massive support. There was a buy signal on a four hour chart. Um, we, we can see the blue line above the white line. There was a lot of yellow and blue still, so it should be green to have a full confirmation. That's why I'm saying medium risk. I'm taking this risk because I can see the Bollinger Brand around 67, you know, entering at 65.5. I'm like, okay, maybe I can make a small trade today. And um, if you look to this on the one hour chart, of course, it looks different. There was a buy signal. Uh, we have the candle closing above the yellow stepping line. There is already green and the blue line is on top. And we are at the level of 40 with a white line. So we can easily go up, guys, and uh, try to break this level of resistance at 65,500 and if we do I think we push it to 66.2 or something or even 67 which could be a nice profit again medium risk trade in my opinion and um, if we zoom out we zoom out to the daily chart that daily chart I've told you if we break this level of support which we just did 
uh, we will fall to the next level of support and that support level will be around $62,300 US dollar. Of course, we can stay a little bit above it as we saw the wick here was already 64K, which also is a level of support. And um, if you don't know how to find these levels, I just look on the charts to where a lot of candles like hit the same level every time again and again. So for example, over here, that line. Now we're gonna look to the chart. Over here, we're finding support on that level. These two wicks were resistance. Here we found support around this level. Here again, support around this level. Here we found support. Here we broke it, then it became resistance for some candles because here again, support. Then again, resistance, resistance. Here we broke it again, so now it became support again. So you can see a lot of wicks or candles are closing or hitting that line. So that's a line of support. So the first line of support would be that uh, 63,900, like 64K. And then if you break that, we would go to uh, 62,300. That's how it works. Um, the ultimate support is here at the 200 daily moving average around uh, 56,000, like 57,000 US dollar, but that will be increasing. Now the RSI guys, as you can see on the bottom, we are almost bottoming out. I told you also, we can still bottom out. It doesn't mean we will fall way lower with the price, but still this needs to go down below the 30 level to have a full recovery. Check what happened. The last time we came down below the 30 level, that was when the Bitcoin price was at 57K, we brought it all the way back to 72K. So every time when an RSI on the daily bottoms out, we can go back even further just to show you how it works. Over here, the RSI came down to this level of 39,000. Then we went up again, bam, to 70K. Now the time before that is somewhere over here. There we came down below. That was at the level of 25,000 US dollar and we brought it all the way here to that 40K level. So yes, Every time when that RSI bottoms out, there will be reversal and that reversal will make sure we go up in price again. It is just as simple as it is. Now, let's jump into some more interesting charts. The first chart that I found on X is this one. This chart is showing us, yeah, maybe we are in an ascending triangle. This is an ascending triangle pattern and that breaks out mostly to the upside. So we could see this as an ascending triangle pattern. So we can go again, you know, from these levels of 65 to 70K, maybe even back again here to 66, and then again to 70K before we break it completely out. But this is an ascending triangle. And this white dotted line, if I need to guess, is a moving average or is uh, at the moment the cost price uh, because we are keeping support on that one. I couldn't find the information what kind of line it is, but I think it's a moving average. Let me know down below if you know what this dotted line is, guys. Now, in the next one. This one is showing you, yeah, maybe we are making a head and shoulder pattern, you know, this is an inverse head and shoulder pattern, of course, left shoulder is over there, we have a head over there, we are now making another shoulder, so we should be like bouncing from here back to the 70k level to make that inverse head and shoulder pattern complete, and then from there, of course, the target is way higher, somewhere to that 90k level again. Many possibilities on the charts, guys, but let's see what more we have. Now, if we look to this one, we can see a beautiful fractal. We can see in 2015-17, and yes, this bull market is looking like a 2015-17 bull market, not like a 2020 bull market. But if we see this over here, we were there in July 2016. That is exactly where we are now here in 2024. That's eight years later in July, we are in that third move. And from that third move, we will go into a massive bull market all the way up, in my opinion, to 160,000 US dollars. So yes, I do think we are almost copying that cycle of 2015 to 2017. And it's a weekly chart, guys. So yes, there was a top and we fell down a little bit. So for a couple of months, we went like sideways before we started somewhere in the end of 2016. And we created this bull market all the way till December 2017, guys, where we found the top. Now we are... Eight years later, in July 2024, we are seeing the small top, we are seeing this small pullback. We will be going some sideways all the way up into September 2024 and then create a massive run again, end of 2025, after September to create a new bull market top. Not everyone seems to understand, um, of course, these 
uh, for your cycles, but there is people that do understand these cycles. For example, most people that hold 10 plus Bitcoin and um, they have climbed all the way back to a two year high holding level. So at the moment, June 2016, there is at the moment 16.16 million Bitcoins held by 10 plus BTC wallets, guys. So that's 82% of the supply. It's not yet a new autumn high because in 2022, that was the same number in June, but we are again at a beautiful high of people that understand the bull market for your cycle. All those wallets with 10 plus BTC, they understand how these four year cycles work guys. And you know what they have been doing? They have been accumulating already since September, 2023, early already, January, 23, they start to accumulate. Then in September, they accumulated more. And at the moment they keep accumulating. They now in combine hold 16.16 million BTC, which is 82% of supply. You should be accumulating as well, because when these people accumulate, they accumulate also to make profits. They understand the four year cycle. You should start to understand it by now as well. And those people mostly also keep an eye on Bitcoin versus the S&P 500 because they are often correlated. They are often close to each other until that Bitcoin goes into the massive bull market. Then Bitcoin takes a distance. At the moment, the S&P 500 is outperforming Bitcoin. If we compare it to Bitcoin, Bitcoin should already be above 100,000 US dollar if it wants to stay close to that S&P 500. So yes, I believe we will not even just come close, but we will even break that one into 160K while this S&P will drop a little bit against the Bitcoin uh, line. So yes, in my opinion, we will be creating autumn highs very soon again. These are the latest autumn highs before the halving. Now we want to create some new autumn highs over there after this halving, but probably after the summer, guys. Now, then we have the hash ribbon indicator. Whenever there is this pinkish area on the chart, that is when the distribution is happening. That is when the amount of hash rate is dropping tremendously, when the miners are distributing. So that is in this pinkish area. After that pinkish area, we get a white area that's the increase of the price again. At the moment, we are in this pinkish area. There is a hash rate drop, which means there is distribution, which means that won't take forever, which means we will go into the white phase again where the Bitcoin price will start to rise. And when that happens, there is an indicator that will help you with finding that one. I found this one also on X, uh, but on this one, you can see that whenever that hash ribbon signal flashes blue over here in the bottom, that's a buy signal. The first buy signal over here, 50%. Another buy signal over there, 250%. This is in the bull market of 2020. Here, another buy signal, 80%. It's still the bull market of 2020-21. Then we had that bear market completely. Then there was a buy signal over here in the bear trend. Mostly these signals are not that valid in a bear market. We need to wait for the Bitcoin price to bottom out. When that price bottoms out over there, then we can take that next signal. What is the next signal saying? Yes, another 66% run. And then the next signal gave us 150%. Now we are waiting for that buying signal of that hash ribbon. And when that will happen, on average, we push the price up with 121% from that buy signal. So we are waiting for that to play out. And it will soon play out. We can see that inverse head and shoulder also on this chart. You know, the target of 93K. We will wait for this buy signal to flash. And when it flashes, again, you should already be in Bitcoin. So you should be dollar cost averaging now to take those profits again around 90K or even at 160 at the end of this bull market top. Very interesting chart. And then we have the short term holder cost basis, which also is the answer to that question on that white dollar line. What was that white dollar line? That white dollar line was the short term holder cost basis. We are finding support on the level. Just like we did in the previous bull market in the beginning of that bull run, we found support on that line. After that, we exploded massively. Also here in the beginning of the bull market, we found support at the line. We kept support at the line every time, support at that line, all the way up to the top there where we took a distance. We are now supporting it over there, supporting it over here. We will keep support probably and just blast off from this line. That is also why I opened that long today, guys.
The crypto tip for today, guys, is look at all the moving averages. The 20 moving average, the 50 moving average, the 100 moving average, the 200 moving average. All these moving average, you can add them for free on the chart on your trading view account. It's very simple. These moving average mostly act as a resistance or as a support. So at the moment, we can be losing the 20 or the 50 day moving average, but you know, we can still hold the 100 moving average or for example, the 200 moving average at support levels. So always add these moving average to your charts. Short term, I would look at the 12 and the 20 or maybe the 21, like midterm, the 50 and the 100, long term, it's a 200, even the 300 if you look on the monthly chart by now. So you have all these moving averages that will show you the exact levels of support and resistance, add them to your chart on TradingView. A very simple but very useful crypto tip for all those people that wanna learn a little bit more about reading the charts add moving average to the chart. And there's two kinds of moving average you can add to the chart. That's a simple moving average, or it's the exponential moving average, the SMA or the EMA. And you can do that on any time frame, on the 15 minute, on the four hour, on the daily, on the weekly, and on the monthly. Check it out, just play around with it, and you will educate yourself a little bit more about these moving averages. Then answering the question of one of the followers, another question that was a remark. The remark was, yeah, Didi, and when the summer is over, are you then still gonna say, ah, the bull market is gonna start very soon? So this person doesn't really believe in what I'm saying. Now, I do think that you have been following probably the wrong influencers that continuously like switch from bullish to bearish, from there to there, from here to there. Guys, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. Welcome to me, welcome to Didi. Yes, I am not that kind of influencer. I've been saying already for over two years now that the bull market top will be in 2025. I'm not switching that. I'm not switching my mind on that. I know for sure that that bull market top will not be in 2024, but in 2025. And of course, not like 1000% sure, because nothing is for sure. But in my opinion, if you do TA, like analyze the charts, there's only one moment that we will see another bull market top. And that's around 17 to 18 months after the halving. And that brings us to September to December in 2025. So I have never switched from that. I have always stayed true to that. I've always said that Jessa and Juna just came running home, which I don't believe. You are, eh? What? You just ran the last 50 yeah. meters? Yeah. Or no, everything? No. 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 Yeah. Serious? Jessa got, got the sneaker. Sneaker, <laughs> Jessa got sneaker. Yeah, but that's good. It's a start. Probably there were no scooters. <laughs> and yes, it's true. I'm not talking to a ghost. Look, that's where they go. They go home. So to get back to that story, I am not that kind of influencer, guys. I have been saying now for two years already, you can see that very long-term monthly chart that I've told you guys, that bear market bottom, 16K, we're gonna go slowly up, grinding all the way up, beautiful in 2024, see another pullback in January 2025, and see a top somewhere in 2025, September-ish, or even later, guys. I've been repeating it already since the bear market bottom that that would be the trajectory for Bitcoin. So no, I am not going to say after the summer year we'll take another couple of months. So believe me, go away in May and remember to come back in September. Why? Because September, October, November, December historically have been proven to be the most bullish parts in these Bitcoin movements. And there will be another dip in January or February before we go up again, make a huge bull market top somewhere in 2005 September guys so that is my answer to your comment please don't compare me to all those influencers that keep shifting their opinion about when the bull market top is and when how high it will be I've been consistently saying it will be between 120 and 160k and it will be somewhere near September 2025 and I have never changed my opinion on that Having said that, guys, we are going into the end of the video, the inspirational part. Today's quote is a very simple one again, but very powerful. There are multiple ways that lead to Rome. And you need to understand this, what it really means. Because a lot of people use that phrase in their daily life. Yeah, there's multiple ways that lead to Rome, or there are more ways that lead to Rome, but they don't really understand what it means. It means that whatever I'm saying on these videos every day in the inspirational part, that is my path, but there are multiple paths possible for you to end up at the same result. 
You just need to set your target first. What is my target in life? What is my goal? Where, where do I want to change to? What do I want to become? What is the new passion that I want to start doing daily in my life? What is it? And if you find that target, if it is a short-term or long-term target, then you can set out your path. And it doesn't need to be in a straight line. It can be like curved, or it can be curved right line. It can be in multiple ways, multiple ways for you to end up at that result that you're searching for. It doesn't need to be in a straight line. And to be very honest, even if you say, ah, I'm gonna go left, at the end of that street to the left, there will be another choice, right or left. Probably you will choose right, and at the end of that street, there will be another choice, right or left. Or maybe you walk into a dead end, then you need to return back, and then another choice, left or right. So there will always be these choices if you wanna go left or right, because there will be multiple ways that will lead to the end result. You just need to be sure that you determine what the end result needs to be. There's a lot of traffic nowadays because the street was like closed, but now it's open again. So there's a lot of traffic. I need to search for a new location. <coughs> Talking about a new location, guys, soon we will be moving to a new location, but I won't disclose yet where. I will disclose it when we are there, guys. But to be very clear, it is not that difficult. Don't focus on one fixed path. Yes, sometimes that goes automatically right. And sometimes you need to make like detours to come to the exact same point. That is life. That is all the beautiful things about living. You can be living that life to the fullest. And it doesn't matter what comes on your path or which path you take, you just need to embrace that path, whatever that it gives you. And sometimes it will give you some negative things. It won't only be positive. If you change your life, for example, into this travel lifestyle, this digital nomad lifestyle that we did, yes, of course, the Instagram, you see all these beautiful pictures, it all looks amazing. But also we have our dips, also we have our detours, also we sometimes need to choose between left or right. And also we sometimes walk into a dead end and need to return back to that cross point, where do we go now? That is just part of life, that is the beauty of life. If that wouldn't be part of the life, life would be pretty, pretty boring. It would be, okay, I just need to do this and everything goes automatically. No, life is about having and experiencing ups and downs to the fullest but don't experience them as something negative. Experience them as something very positive, something that you learn from, something that will teach you a lesson in this life that will make it possible for you to decide at the next cross point where to go again, left or right. And in the end, you will end up reaching that goal or that end point that you want to reach in your life. But it will take some time, give it the time. But it all starts, like I said yesterday, with making that first step, taking action changing your dreams, changing your wishes, changing your future perspective, all of that is possible if you just take that first step. And that first step can be a huge leap into the deep, you just jump, or maybe you wanna bungee jump with a cord, or maybe you wanna bungee jump with a parachute, or maybe with parasailing, it goes all a little bit slower, but you need to start and take that jump. That was everything for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. Again, if you did enjoy the video, give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. Uh, please remember that yes, at 80,000 subscribers, we will do another giveaway. You need to be subscribed to this video and I will next time check if you do give thumbs ups, if you do watch videos multiple times. So all the accounts that only give like one thumbs up and only watched one video won't be able to win that prize. And yes, I can see this exactly if I select the winner, I can click your account and I can see how often you are watching my videos or if you are interacting or if you indeed are subscribed to the channel. So if you don't do that, you won't be able to win that $800 and at 85K subscribers at $850 and at 90K subscribers at $900 and $95,950 and at 100K subscribers, you won't be able to win that big prize, guys. So do subscribe, share with your friends and family and watch all these videos. Now, thank you for watching. Wish you an amazing Wednesday. Uh, have a lot of fun with watching the European Championship and check also, of course, the Bitcoin family, European champion, pool so you can see where you are at the moment. I am at place nine or something. I'm not doing really well. Now, thanks. See you tomorrow again. Bam.